So you want to create a free server for Minecraft 1.21.4 that is hosted on your computer and you don't have to pay anybody to do for you. Then this is a proper video for you. I'm going to teach you step by step how to get your computer ready and how to create the server and then how to have your friends join when you pour forward and do all of that. Let's go ahead and begin. The first thing we have to do is make sure that our PC meets the requirements to create the server. For that, you have to make sure that you have played Minecraft 1.21.4 at least once on your computer. And then once you open it, you could close out from it to create an instance of 1.21.4. The second requirement is to have Java 21 or JDK 21. This is not optional. This is a requirement from Mojang. You're going to need Java 21 after the Minecraft update 1.20.5 to install any mods and to create any server on your computer. To check what Java we are running, we're going to head over to search. We're going to click in there and we're going to type auto remove programs, open that up in here. And now in here, we're going to click on search apps and we're going to type Java. We're going to see what Java we are running. And if we have any other Java rather than Java 21, you might have to uninstall it and then install Java 21. Installing Java 21 is super simple. And I'm going to leave this guide in the description. It's going to be labeled as Java 21 on how to download and install Java. But pretty much, you're just going to head over to Java 21 website over here, scroll down and select JDK 21, and then select Windows and select the x64 installer by clicking on this blue line. And after it downloads, you're just going to open the installer and hit next a couple of times, and you should have Java 21, and you should be ready to begin creating the server or installing any mods for Minecraft. Those are the two requirements, and now we are ready to begin. We're going to click on the second link in the description, which is our guide on how to create a Minecraft server. You don't have to read through this. You could just scroll down to step one and click download server.jar. That is going to make sure you are redirected to the official website for downloading servers for Minecraft. You don't want to search this app randomly as you might end up in the wrong website. So that's why we always use the links in the description. Once over here, we're going to look for this line that says download Minecraft server 1.21.4.jar. And we're going to click on this green line in here and we're going to begin the download from that file. Now keep this website handy as you might need it later on on this tutorial. While the server file downloads, you have to know that the server that you are creating is a locally hosted server, meaning that you need your computer on 24 seven if you want your friends to join at any moment, as well as you need your internet online. And then you're going to have to open your ports and port forward your IP address so people could join. That is why this server is only meant to have close friends join as you're going to be giving out your IP address. And that is something you don't want to do to any stranger as they could find exactly where you live as well as boot you offline. If you want to prevent all of that with the first link in the description, you could create a server with Apex hosting. This server is hosted online, so you don't have to worry about keeping your computer on, but they also support over 200 mod packs that you could install with just a click of a button. They also have locations all around the world, so you don't have to worry about lagging. And something I personally love is that you could create the server through your phone and then access the server console through your phone, meaning that you could be away from the house and still change the settings, kick people out, do whatever you want to do through your phone. I'm going to leave that first link in the description. Thank you, Apex Hosting, for sponsoring this video and take advantage of that 25% now on the first link. Let's keep going with the tutorial. After we download that file, we're going to find it here in our recent download history or within the downloads folder in our computer. And we're going to go ahead and drag and drop it into our desktop. Simply grab it from here and then drag and drop it. Now we're going to create a folder. This folder could be located on your desktop or anywhere that you have a space on your computer. So I'm going to right click in here. I'm going to click show more options. I'm going to click new and then I'm going to select folder. This folder could be named anything. I'm going to name it server 1.21.4, but you can name it anything. This is just going to help us know where our server is located. Now drag and drop that server file into this folder. Open this folder app. And the first thing that we're going to do is make sure that where it says view, we click in there, we click on show, and then we click file name extensions. We have to be able to see the name extensions of our file. And after that, we're going to right click in here. We're going to head over to new and we're going to choose text document. Go ahead and open this text document app. And now remember when I said to keep that website open earlier, the one where we downloaded the server from, go back into that website and you're going to copy this line right here. I'm also going to leave this text in the description of this video, as well as on the first pinned comment with multiple different options for multiple different amounts of RAM that you could use in your server. And if you don't understand what I'm saying, just wait a second and you will see what I mean. Copy this line in here again and head back into that text document and paste it right here on the first line. What we're going to do in here is change a couple of parameters. The first thing that we're going to do in here is make sure that the Minecraft server that jar name matches the name of that file that we put into this folder earlier, the one that we downloaded the server that jar file. Now you could either change this line here or this word in here to match server.jar or you could change the server.jar name file to match this part right here. I'm going to do the easier one, which is changing this part in here to be called server.jar, right? Making it look just like that. I think that's the easiest way. Just make sure this word in here 
matches this file over here. The next thing that we're going to do is choose how much RAM we're going to allow this server to have. And to do that, it's pretty simple. A good rule of thumbs is choosing half of your available RAM on your computer. How do you know how much RAM do you have? It's super simple. Just right click on your bar down here and then head over to task manager over here. Click on these little three lines in here, head over to performance and then in here, find the memory. And as you can see, I have 15.8 gigabytes, which is around 16 gigabytes of RAM. As you can see right here, 16 gigabytes of RAM available. That's how much I have available. As of right now, I'm using around six gigabytes for recording this video. So let's say that I have around eight gigabytes available. I'm going to give the server half of that, which is four gigabytes of RAM. The amount of gigabytes that you give your server really depends on how many players you want to have. And if you want to add mods and whatnot later on the server, but four gigabytes as of right now for around five to 10 players, it's great. So I'm actually going to give this four gigabytes. To choose the amount of gigabytes, select the 1024M number in here and change it to the amount of gigabytes that you want to give your server. In this case, I'm going to put four and then you're going to type a capital G that stands for gigabytes, right? So now the XMX equals 4G, which means that the maximum amount of RAM that I'm going to let the server use if it needs to, it's four gigabytes. And the XMS, which is the minimum amount of RAM that I'm going to allow the server to run on, is going to be one gigabyte. So what I recommend in here is that you select the 1024M and change it to one and then type in the G. So now our maximum amount is four gigabytes and our minimum is one gigabyte. Again, these numbers will be specifically to your situation. You might want to use eight gigabytes, two gigabytes, and maybe sometimes 16. I'm going to leave multiple options in the description of this video, but you now know how to change that just in case. The next thing that we want to do now, after we have done all the changes in this text file, is click on file, click save as, and then over here, we're going to name this start that bat so the file name is going to be start that bat just like that and we're going to change the save as type to all files once you've done that once you change the file name extremely important again that you put bat at the end dot bat and then all files click save over here and now you could close this text document and now you could even delete that new text document we don't need it anymore as we have the start that bat file on our server folder the next thing that we're going to do logically is double click on that start that bat file which is going to start extracting files into this folder over here, as you can see over here. And that is actually going to stop as soon as you see a ULA.txt file. As you can see, everything is stopped. Even the command prompt closed by itself. And we see that ULA.txt file. Go ahead and open that ULA.txt file. And then over here, all we have to do is change the ULA equal false to equal true. Now, if you don't know what that is doing, just head over to this link over here and read through the Minecraft ULA. So what we're going to do now is click on file, hit save, and close this text document. And now we're going to start that server again by double clicking on the start.bat file. And that is going to now extract more files into this folder because it wasn't done yet. It might take a little bit longer now because it's actually about to start your world. As you can see, it says done here. We're gonna stop that server real quick by typing a stop into the command prompt. Just type a stop in there and our server will close. And that is how you're going to stop most of the time your server. Now we have multiple files in here. And the most important one is the server that properties file. To open that file, we're going to right click on it, click open with, and then you're going to select notepad. You, I'm just gonna click just once right now, but you could always open it with notepad if you don't have any other text reader like notepad plus plus or such but i'm make this file a little bit bigger so we can see everything in here there's multiple options that you could change here like for example the difficulty of the server maybe you don't want to play easy you want to play on hard or hardcore you know it's up to you how you want to play peaceful whatever other things that you could change in here for example is the maximum amount of players on your server maybe you want more than 20 players i'm gonna leave it at 20 as i don't need any other and a lot of the changes that you do to your server are gonna be done through here. But what is important to us right now is actually the server port, which as you can see where it says server port down here, it's 25565, which is the default Minecraft server port for any server that you open. And that is the number that we need to remember right now, which is 25 five six five because that is the number that we're going to use when we port forward and when we open our port to the internet for people to join just remember that you don't have to do anything on the server ip because we're not running multiple servers we're just going to run this one and we should be good with this server port so copy that number the two five five six five in case you're going to forget it just put it somewhere else safe do any changes that you want in here then save this file and you could close the server that properties we're going to go ahead and join our own server right now i'm going to show you how to join your server and then i'm going to tell you how to have your friends join your server so what we're going to do is to start our server by double clicking on that start that bat file and we're also going to open our minecraft game now this is a vanilla server so you have to make sure that you open your vanilla version of the game if you try to join the server using mods you won't be able to join the server so make sure that you launch vanilla 
Minecraft or you, with Optifine maybe if you want to use some shaders. I'm going to go ahead and hit play and I'm going to wait for the game to open. Now I went ahead and put the game and the server side by side here so you can see everything on real time. Let's go ahead and join a multiplayer server, our server, right? We're going to click on multiplayer. Let's go ahead and click that. Do not show this screen again. You can read through this thing here and then click proceed. And most of the times nowadays, you'll actually see your server appear here by itself when it scans for games on your local network. But for some reason, it's not doing it for me. So the way that you're going to join is click on direct connection if you just want to join right now. But if instead you want to add the server into here, so it's always here, like I have this server over here, you could just click add server and it's going to save in here. So you don't have to type direct connection every single time. In this case, I'm just going to type direct connection. And for the server address, we're going to type in local host. And that's it. That's all we need. Unless you're having multiple servers, you don't have to type anything else. Just type in local host and click join server. Give it a couple of seconds. And as you can see, we're loading our 1.21 for Minecraft server. We're here in the world and it says over here on the server side that I have just joined the game. As a matter of fact, I'm going to OP myself, which means that I'm going to give myself administrator permissions in order for me to do anything I want in the server using commands. To do that, just type OP into the console over here and then type your username, which in my case, it's it's Cuba and then press enter. And now we are admins or server operators of our server. That is how we're going to join our own server. But now you want your friends to join. And for that, we need to do something called port forwarding. Port forwarding is extremely simple and I'm going to show you how to do it. To do that, we're going to disconnect from our server and we could actually turn off the server for now. We don't need to keep the server on while we pour forward our server. So let's go ahead and stop the server, close Minecraft, and you could even close the server folder as you don't need it right now. Head over to your search bar over here and you're going to type firewall and then you're going to open the window defender firewall. Before we go ahead and do all of this, do this under your own responsibility. Again, this video is only for educational purposes. If you don't know what pour forwarding means, just let Apexels create that server for you with the first link in the description. But if you want to still pour forward, open the window defender firewall and once you're over here you're going to click on advanced settings you need to be an admin to access all of this so make sure you are an admin on your computer once over here we're going to create two rules an inbound rule and an outbound rule i click on inbound rules first and now over here we're going to click new rule and we're going to click where it says port and once over here we're going to click next we're going to select tcp first and we're going to type that port number that we said earlier which is on your server properties which is 25565 Click next. And remember, this is a TCP. Click next and then click allow the connection. Click next and then click next again. And then you can name this something like TCP or Minecraft. It's up to you how you want to name it. This is not going to do anything. You don't have to give it a description and then hit finish. Now we're going to do another rule. Click on new rule again. Select port one more time. Click next. Click UDP this time and then type 25565 again. Click next and then allow the connection. Next, next. I'm going to name this one UDP and I'm going to name it UDP Minecraft and then hit finish. And now we're going to do the same things for the outbound rules over here. We just did it for the inbound. We're going to repeat the process for outbound new rule, select port, click next, type the port number in here, 25565, select TCP, click next, allow connection, click next, select the settings in here, click next, and then name this something like TCP. Minecraft. And now we're going to create our last rule, which is a UDP, right? So we're going to select new rule, port, next, UDP, and then 25565, next, then allow the connection, next, next, and name this UDP, Minecraft, and then finish. You can name those connections whatever you want or those rules whatever you want, but those are the names I chose. Now we could close out from this control panel or from this window defender thing, just close. Hit close over here. And now it's time to open our router's port. To do that, you're going to head over to your internet router in your home. There's a lot of internet routers out there, and most of them will have something like this on the back. What we're looking for when we find a router like this is specifically for the router login details, which is usually going to be an IP address, which is a local IPv4 address. And then we're also looking for the username as well as the password. OK, most of the time it will be something like 192 and then dot, dot, dot certain numbers for the address or the link that we're going to use. And then for the username is usually going to be admin and for the password is usually going to be admin as well. Most of the time, that's how it is. So just find that on your router. Again, every router is different and there's probably a lot of videos out there on how to do this on your specific router. So if you get lost at any moment, just search up your router on the Internet and then find the logins for your specific router. But again, I'm going to do it for my router. So I'm going to put my local IPv4 address here 
on the browser. Now here is the login for my router and I'm putting all this blurry because there is a lot of personal information here that you don't want the world to have, but this is my login for my router and it's actually having me log in through a phone app. So it means that I can't even do this through the computer. If you have to do this through the phone app, we have a video on the channel on how to do that, which I'm going to leave in the description of this video. And it's also going to show at the end of this video. So you could just go ahead and watch how to do it from your phone in case you have to do something similar to me. But those of you that actually got into the router login page and you don't have to do it through the phone, here's how to do it. And I'm actually going to use the router simulator by Troubleshoot. He's a great YouTuber and I'm going to use his platform to show you how to do this because it's actually pretty useful and it's pretty similar to what most of you are going to see when you're doing this. Let's say you're logging into your router's configuration page. Just look for something called security most of the times. Maybe it's called networking. There's different names, but essentially we're looking for port forwarding. Just go through all your options and then find the port forwarding option. Once you find this option, you're going to see something like this in your computer. So you're going to see something called port. Sometimes it's not going to say external and internal. It's just going to say port. What we have to do in here is actually type 25565. Just type 25565 in anything that says port in here. And then for the protocol, which might have a different name on your computer, but eventually you will see the TCP and UDP option. In here, we have to select both of them. Now, if under your protocol, you only have TCP and then you have UDP, then what you're going to do instead of selecting both, you're going to do it one by one. So you'll create a TCP rule using these settings, and then you're going to do the same thing with the UDP and then just add both of them. But a lot of you are going to have both options. So just select that. And then for the local IP, if you do get this show. I seen that not a lot of people get the local IP, but if you do, you're going to add your local IP before number into this local IP bar. And to find that you're going to head over to search and you're going to type command prompt, go ahead and open that up. And once the command prompt opens, you're going to type IP config, and then you're going to hit enter and then look for the IPv4 address in here, which as you can see, mine is right here, IPv4 address. And you're going to copy this whole number, the IPv4 address, and then you're going to go back into your router settings. And in the local IP, you're going to put that full number in here. Here. Once you've done that, you're going to add that rule in here. And then again, if you have to do it one by one, just select TCP, add TCP, add UDP using the 25565 ports and your local IP address and make sure they're both enable them. If you ever want to close your ports, just come back in here and then close those ports and then go back to your firewall and then delete the rules that we created earlier. That is pretty much how to reverse this, right? And now that we port forwarded, it's time for our friends to join our server. The way that our friends are going to join our server is by us giving them our IP address, not the local IP address, but our public IP address. And to do that, just head over to the browser and then type what's my IP address and then head over to what is my IP address com and then over here look for your IP address which is usually this IPv4 number in here copy that a string of numbers and send it to your friends and then after that you could start your server and your friends could already join using that IP address that you send them so let's say your friends open Minecraft they're going to head over to multiplayer direct connection and they're going to put your IP address which whatever it is you know it's usually a string of numbers I don't know what yours might look like but it's usually something similar to that right let's say that they put that that's how they're going to join your server. And if they want to have your server already safe, they're just going to click add server. They're going to name it whatever they want, like Apex Hosting. And then on the server address, they're going to put that number that you gave them, which is your local IP address. Again, I don't recommend that you give your IP address to any person because they will be able to do things that you don't want. And if you need a server and don't want to do all of that, just use the first link in the description and create your server with Apex Hosting. But this is pretty much how to create a server for Minecraft 1.21.4 and how to pour forward it so your friend could join at any moment. I hope this tutorial helped you out. If it did, don't forget to subscribe. And as always, bye bye.